Oh, I didn't see you there. Come join me, won't you? Thank you. You're looking good. Uh, hi everybody, this is Adrian with another video. Uh, we have someone from Toronto uh, calling. Um, this is Andy Bilinyuk. Uh He's been one of my best friends for all of my life. Uh, another musician and a man of a lot of musical talents. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, how we got together originally, um, how we knew each other, uh, and how uh, you've been in bands, how I've been in bands, and how we've been in a band together and uh, what we like about music and maybe where music is going there's there's a good question how's that <laughs> so how, how 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 do how do we meet andy so let's go what do you want to start with how, how do we meet how did we meet well one of my earliest memories i would say is backyard birthday parties um when i'm like I don't know, three or four years old, and everyone's over, and there's you and everyone else, and I'm like, who's that? Oh, that's Adrian, your friends, oh, okay. And then from there, because it was summertime, it, going up north to the cottage and everything, and yeah. of course you got your families and our families, and then more time on the beach, and I was like, hey, I remember you, hey, I remember you, okay, let's play. <laughs> Digging sandcastles. That's and right. And then Adrian's were involved, of course, our good old friend Adrian Tanjak. Yeah. And it just kind of snowballed from there to, you know, going to school one day. And then, hey, hi, Adrian. Hi, Andrew. Hey, you know, let's play. Okay. <laughs> and it kind of went on with that. Mm -hmm. And it was wonderful St. Demetrius for many, many years, right? Yep. Mr. Mallet. Yes, that was our, speaking of that, that was our first uh, music teacher, I guess. Tita, uh, ta, tita. Right. <laughs> Other than hearing a lot of music from our parents, of course, that were doing that stuff, he was the official, I guess, yeah, music teacher kind of thing. And uh, that was like an introduction to stuff. And then from there, you know, I don't know, what should I tell you, uh, piano lessons and all that junk? Well, a couple of things. Um, um, we also, there was, uh, was it Pani Slipik that uh, taught us music and how to sing in choir in school. Bo Cherski, he was also there in, from uh, all the great schools at St. Demetrius. Yeah. Um, yes. And he turned out to be a major musical influence for both of us. There was also Plast, and we went to Ukrainian Boy Scouts together, we really did a spew there as well. We did all the singing harmonizing and such. Ever. I remember as a little little kid, that was the first thing, of course, lots of singing. And then it went through choir singing and all that. And that, of course... Vocals, yeah. In our, in our path to where now, with, as you, you know, we were, we've been in different bands here and there, and of course the singing part has, has helped a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's always fun seeing other people try and they're having a tough time and but we can do it because we've been doing it forever that's right and yeah pitch and a good ear which is important i remember one of my earliest memories because your dad and my dad were best friends and they would listen to each other's records i would go over to your place at your bungalow and one time your dad put on flight of the bumblebee Oh, yeah. With a French horn, yeah. and I was freaking out because I thought that there was a bee inside the room in your basement, and your dad and my dad burst out laughing. Oh yeah, I would note it. <laughs> um, your your dad actually brought drums to your uh, basement one time, and you're like, "Hey, Adrian, check out the drums," and I'm was stuck in two four time. and I couldn't I couldn't get out of it. I remember trying and. Yeah, uh, but you uh, picked up drums pretty quick, and you can still play some drums too, can't you? Oh yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, my my son Griffin, of course, he's uh, picked it up a little further than I have. Oh really? But, oh, I I need to hear this then. now with uh, double kick as well, and and, and oh. other stuff. 
uh, I'm all right. I'm not too bad. I can keep a decent beat, you know. Uh, and when it, when it, if I need to. But uh, my, of course, my love still is the guitar. So. Mm. Yeah. Do you still hang out with your dad? Uh, yeah, on and off. And um, actually, I'm going to be seeing him in a couple more weeks. I hope to see him soon. Um, and have a sit down and, and, and you know have a beer and. Uh, Throw on an old movie. We're gonna probably watch a funny thing happen on the way to the floor. Yes! Oh my god, yes! Oh, I love that album. That's a great movie with music in mm -hmm. it right there. Steven Sondheim. Uh, yep. Silly, yep. silly music and uh, just a good vibe all overall. Right? Mm -hmm. So good. Um, Part of stuff growing up that I heard, and of course you heard too, because I think we both were very lucky that we were. Our different music styles and things were all over the place, and as we progressed through our lives, we, you know, it's just amazing. I mean, how many different styles of stuff that we could absorb and, and enjoy. Mm. As time goes by, I mean, it's like you can handle hearing this different stuff, whereas some people have, over the years, are like, oh, what's that? Oh. I can't handle it all. Ooh, that's crazy. And you're just, and I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? It's, it's, it's just different music. That's all it is because everything's just music. Mm -hmm. But for some years, it was, it's just difficult to take <laughs> some of this stuff. Yeah, they got like a, a framework that they can only work within, I guess. We were yeah. exposed to a lot of different stuff. I remember going uh, to your place because our moms also hung out all the time. She's like, we're going to uh, Andy's. I'm like, okay, great, let's go. And you introduced me to uh, a lot of uh, metal, ACDC, but you really liked um, oh, uh, Iron Maiden. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, that was like the first heavy, heavy band because it was a progression of, you know, you're a kid and you hear music on the radio. <laughs> Stuff. And then it was, you know, some once in a while, some harder rock and roll, which was like ACDC or something. Mm -hmm. And then, luckily through Scouts, you know, we're seven, eight years old, nine years old, whatever, at the time. And you've got the older, you know, Scout leaders, and they're like, well, what do you guys listen to? And we're like, I don't know, whatever, you know, Michael Jackson and stuff, and whatever. Little ACDC, and they're like, "Well, you gotta listen to this Black Sabbath. You gotta listen to the Doors, and then, and then all of a sudden it went even further. Listen to this, and we're like, what? And it's Iron Maiden. They're like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> That's and right. We got off the radio and. Very exciting music. Um, I remember yeah. in Plast, uh, there was one particular summer camp that we went to, and everyone was saying, Six, 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 the number of the beast, the one yes. for you and me. And I was just like, yeah. this is like not cool because it's really like, it's pro antichrist. Like, what are you guys singing? And I eventually listened to it, and I'm just like, okay, uh, this is really a little, little bit too far for my excitement. But uh, yeah. my tastes Funny. were pretty stunted at that time still. It was kind of, yeah, it felt like kind of like taboo in a way. Yes, yes, right. yeah. You guys were rebelling. We were young. Kinda, uh, yeah, it was, it was all in good fun. The, the main part wasn't just that. It was, it was more the, the music part with the guitars and everything. The energy that was coming out of it. Definitely more exciting than a lot of standard choral music in, that you have in oh, yeah. a lot of liturgies and, and stuff that we were used to listening to. Um, yeah. Being clean means no fun. We were young, we wanted to have fun, so we were willing to experiment a little bit uh, towards that side. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was, yeah, and the, like I said, the energy. Yes. Was and it, it was kind of rebellious, yeah, because. You know, number of the beast. I mean, <laughs> what like, oh, like this stuff. Okay. Well, it that's it. Cool. You you said it. You nail on the head. It was taboo, so you get that sense of like, oh. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 
Um, well, we could talk about Neam Nayak. Uh, who is Neam? Oh, Neam. He was your and your brother's guitar uh, teacher. Yeah, and yeah. I remember hearing about that because I used to come over to your house and I'd see you and your brother taking turns playing and I was like, wow, you guys play guitar and stuff. Yeah, and Paul Tanchak too. Yeah, and of course, Paul Tanchak, that's right, Adrian's uh, older brother. Yes, very cool guy. And it was like, well, I want to try this, so of course our parents talked, and okay, let's go meet him, and I go to the house and go downstairs, and it's, hey, you're Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> 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 I said, hey. <laughs> that was my first thing I said. I was like, oh, okay. And... Uh, <laughs> Neam's the nicest, mildest man I've ever met. He was so oh, yeah. low key and very, very soft in the voice, and just yeah, okay, whatever, let's work that. Uh, uh, try this. Yeah. Here's the hand. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. And uh, he was integral for me to get the start, I guess, of starting to play and figure things out. Me too. Um, yeah. Which was good, even though I was with him for only a year. It was a good start because, first of all, it took, you know, a lot of, you know, hemming and hawing with my parents, you know, I don't know if you should do this, I don't know, and I'm like, come on, I want to do this. <laughs> Better than it's piano, like, hey? I hated piano. They're like, you know, if we're going to buy this guitar, are you going to stick to it and stuff? I'm like, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> I, I mean, speaking of uh, earlier, just briefly, Paul Tanjack, when I... You know, be at Adrian's, and I hear upstairs some noodling going. Bam, 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 bam. I was like, "What? What's that?" Oh, that's my brother. He's just playing. You know, come upstairs, and there he is with the guitar. I was like, "Wow." Yeah. Cool. And because at the same time, I was already listening to a lot of you know rock and roll and heavy metal and stuff. <clears throat> so to try to get a guitar and try to play that same music, which I was feeling, mm. was. Awesome. So I had to push to get in, and I meet Neam, of course. And he's like, "Well, what do you like to do?" And I said, "Well, I want to learn to play electric. It's my favorite." And he goes, "Well, you got to start from the beginning, and let's start with the blues." And uh, so we started doing the blues stuff, and then from there it progressed a little bit. Yeah. After a good year, I was like, "Okay, I think I know what I want to do now." And then, Went further and did my other stuff, so it was yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Learn the basics: the fingering, the timing, the Mel Bay books, uh, picking, strumming, uh, singing at the same time. You know it too, Adrian. If it's in your blood, you're gonna do it forever because it's in you. Yeah. And people are like, oh, I like it and la but and you can tell they're they're not into it as much anymore. And I say, okay, fine, whatever. But I know that their heart isn't in it, so fine, you know. Mm. But for me, my example, and of course yours, uh, it, it's part of life. It's part of getting through this crazy life anyways. Oh, yeah. When it strikes, whatever style of music or the mood is like, uh, it just helps you just de de-stress and... Uh, just kind of enjoy. You get on that beautiful wavelength of feeling good. You know, that's the thing. Yeah. And yeah. hopefully get things going again with the old bands and stuff. Yeah, we're driven with aggression, of course. And uh, we'll see how things kind of go. Yeah, next generation. That'll be very cool. Very cool. Uh, you've played a whole bunch of shows. One of them, I remember, was uh, Bishop Allen Academy in my Catholic school for high school. Um, were you you were doing Battle of the Bands at that point, weren't you? Oh, maybe. When, uh, when uh, was that? Uh, graduated in 1995, 94, 95. Yeah. Because you'd already picked up electric guitars. You were playing with uh, non-Ukrainians. <laughs> Chris Arab, right? Maybe he introduced you to a few people? Maybe with Chris, jamming with Chris Arab, perhaps, right? Mm -hmm. And he's still playing music. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Um, he had a band, a few bands in the last few years. Right now, he's trying to rebuild 
band. So uh, I hope he can do that as well. And that's what I'm trying to get kind of going back into it too. But yeah, there were, there were some good times and as time went by, um, I just wish that there was a bit more seeing each other. I know we lost touch for a little bit, but that's what kind of happens when high school happens. We yeah. went to different schools yeah. and whatever. But uh, then everything kind of came back around, so it's all good. It's always fun to find new people and, and jam, and then you never know. You find somebody that has the same ideas as you do, and then, they, hey, you, know, you meet somebody new to like have a good time and, and uh, make some new music, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or even in when you cross promote, right? Uh, you may have some people that you know would be perfect for this situation, so you introduce them to whoever can make it happen, and maybe they could return the favor to you at a later date at a different location. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's for sure too. I mean, the more connections, the better. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah, as I said, that's a goal of mine for this year to get that kind of going. Yeah. And, and you're so sociable. You've you've always been so outgoing and, and friendly and getting to know people, better. keeping up conversations, relationships. Oh yeah, I mean, it, it, gift of gab, yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's important. Yeah. It's a, it's an intelligence for sure. Uh, I yeah. was always kind of in the back reserved. Uh, you and Bo were the talkers, talkers, talkers. And it was really funny listening to your banter. <laughs> really, really funny. Oh, yeah. There's, there's times where I get carried away, that's for sure. But uh, it took a while uh, for that to kind of happen anyways. But it's here. And it's not going away. I mean, I used to be uh, pretty shy and stuff, too. And then no, you weren't. <laughs> there was a point. Yeah, there was. <laughs> But then, uh, you know, I just things kind of changed and turned around. Finally, in my, you know, late teens, early 20s, it just clicked in and just said, you know what? Screw it. I, I, I'll just say whatever and do whatever and then see what happens. Have then, some fun, yeah. I'll have some fun. And then eventually it clicked in, you know, we started listening to people, what they talk about, what they're saying. And then, then it just, it's just a confidence thing that slowly builds up. And then it goes back to what I was saying, like, and you, you know, too, about connections and stuff. Yeah. Way slowly things will be better, and then, you know, there's more chance of playing live music, mm -hmm. meeting new people, and then being introduced to new bands and stuff, which is a bonus, you know. You never know you find it. Yes. Uh, some of them you forget about because they, they were okay, but meh. <laughs> Yeah. You cast a wide net, and then you can pick and choose, and then when the timing is yeah. right, you strike. Yeah, and then other bands you hear about, you check out, and you go, wow, and then it's worth going to see them because they're really good, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tim Smith has been playing since we were in high school. He's a shredder. He's been playing oh, guitar yeah. in the hallways and, and all that, and he's still playing and still putting up videos, and he's also had some uh, moderate success up on stage. Oh, yeah, he's had a little bit of, uh, a little bit on and off, I'd say, success, and then being a teacher, playing guitar, and teaching people. Um, I, I, it's amazing how, I wish he, if he had the right, you know, I guess if the right people saw him with the right band, he could have went even further, because he's unbelievable, yeah? Mm. Thought that he would, you know, be in one of these huge bands touring around and everything. Uh, but he's done pretty well anyways. And, um, you know, uh, learned from him a few things here and there. And then through him also, which was great in the past, learning about new bands and bands I never heard of. That was a cool thing, you know. And, uh, you know, things like, like uh, I was getting into, like, of course, Iron Maiden. And then there was Metallica and everything and Anthrax. But then he's like, oh, you got to hear this other stuff. There's, you know, nuclear salt. You know, and then there's also Exodus and everything. They're all like, whoa, who are these guys? And he's like, well, just listen to this. And then here's some Slayer, too. And I'm like, whoa, Slayer. <laughs> I remember yeah. going to a Slayer concert with you. And he, I, thankfully, I had headphones. Or not headphones, uh, earplugs. And... Uh, Peter Zinn's brother Christopher got us into the floor because he was part of the security team and hearing that just going through your chest, oh my god, that's so loud. Crazy, crazy loud. Crazy adrenaline and, and energy. Yep. Um, and uh, the other one too that we went to was the Iron Maiden. Yes. Uh, which 
raped. Psych ward. Um, being like right there and looking right up to the guitar. Oh, so waiting. good. We took some really nice pictures too. Like yeah. Everybody else that's from the band. Yeah. That it was some good times. Yeah. And Peter that, and Chris got us into some amazing concerts. And I've seen so many with you, thankfully. Yeah, it was fun because the extra bonus was seeing how you were all reacting to it too because I know many many shows and you've only seen a few at that point of the metal genre but you the excitement that I saw that you were having in the good time I was like yeah this is good, good memory that will last you know forever and that's the thing right so yeah. that's the main definitely good definitely good um, you're lucky that you uh, live not in Toronto, but thereabouts there in Southern Ontario and Whitby, right? Um, and uh, there are Durham. places. Sorry? The Durham area. In the Durham area. Uh, there's lots of people you can connect with, uh, different musicians, different pubs and bars and stuff you can go to. Uh, I'm living in rural Alberta, so I am kind of trying to get used to this online stuff. Um, I would like to go hit Edmonton a little bit more. And there's a music scene that's huge in Edmonton, uh, but I can only access that so, so often. I think you're a little bit better situated. Um, have you thought about branching out and making contacts and supporting other people, having other people support you as a musician? Well, yeah, that's funny you mentioned that because this year one of my goals is to get more involved and go out a bit more because right next, I'm in Whitby and right next door is Oshawa and they've got a lot of bars and pubs a lot more than Whippy even has and uh, there is a little bit of a scene going on and I was just starting to get uh, some contacts before COVID and all of a sudden boom, everything got shut down mm. now that things are restarting I probably get in touch with those people again and then start going out to a few little club bar shows and stuff and then get my old band to play, you know, a couple of gigs here and there too, and uh, just take it from there. That would be a great place to start to come up as a nexus because people from Toronto can go up. Everyone from around the Barry area can go to Barry. Um, and it used to be huge for the Molson uh, concert series they did back in the early nineties. Oh, that was great times there. Yeah, that yeah. big huge. Shows they had there. I remember uh, they stopped doing it, and I'm just like, what the hell? Why? This was such a good thing. It, I, don't, I don't know why either. That was just a big, beautiful outdoor venue. Huge fields area, right? So lots of, you know, lots of parking and outdoors, room for everything. Um, I don't know. Uh, they just kind of stopped. It's probably something political. I don't really know why. Maybe because, where the I mean, money was going? Usually it you know, boils down to yeah. money somehow. Yeah, I don't know, something. I mean, a big I part of the saying, equation anyways. I saw Metallica up there, you know, I saw, you know, um, Tool up there. Oh. I saw Pearl, Pearl Jam I saw right there too. Really? There. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, so. But, uh, yeah, it's too bad. But they've had a few nice uh, pubs and bars, uh, which, and one of them we played there too, which was good. And eventually get up there again, I hope, if they let us. <laughs> oh, they will. Another <laughs> story. <laughs> we, we got in trouble with one of the promoters there. Oh, my God. See, COVID happened, and we were scheduled to do a show. But we all said, no, you know what, we better not do this. So we called them and said, yeah, we won't be able to do this. And we gave them at least three weeks' notice. Oh, okay. Promoter, she was all like, oh, what's this? Blah, blah, blah. We're like, yeah, you know, this isn't safe just now. We're not sure. We don't think we should do this. Just before the show that week, it was all over the news. Everything's shut down, closed, blah, 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 blah. We can't do this. So, I mean, we kind of saw the writing on the wall anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she said to us, oh, you know, we need you to play with the show. And she got all upset about it. And we're like, what? Well, safety is, is an issue I mean and we heard of people getting really sick and this is two years ago even yeah this is when it was really scary beginning of it all and we're like we don't want to be involved in this stuff I mean we want to just chill and just you know wait till things get better
I was playing in another band called Random Peace, and I remember you and Bo came to check me out, and you guys were saying, oh, we should play with Adrian, yeah, let's do something about this. Yeah. Yes, that was, I remember that, um, and I remember I, I watched one of your videos, and you were briefly talking about that, um, I was so in, like, I wasn't playing yet, so I was in between bands and just wanting to play. And, you know, me and Bo started talking a bit more and just thinking about doing things. And uh, this other guy, Dan, of course, was involved. And um, when we saw that concert that you're talking about that you guys had, I just saw this energy that you were putting out. Like, there were maybe, I don't know, 20 people, 30 maybe? But you were playing... Like you're in front of like thousands of people just giving it. <laughs> it was like flowing through you, the energy. And I'm looking at the other guys going, What are these guys doing? Adrian's like doing what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get up there. And give music. her. Yeah, just give her. Um, and I was like, You know what? He needs to be in a better band. He needs to be with us. <laughs> Me, right? And that's where it kind of clicked in, and we looked at each other and said to each other, Adrian's got jails, we got to do this. So then that's kind of history after that. Of course, we all got together and, yeah. and said, this is good, because we wanted to start something that was fun, but had energy. And lo and behold, I mean, you know what? It was great. We were playing house parties, and then... You know, steady bar every once, twice a month. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah, we called ourselves The Thirst and uh, we did a whole bunch of classic rock covers. And we changed it up every once in a while, introduced more range. Uh, uh, we got Paul to come in on keyboards after Dan had left. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, excellent experience uh, with uh, sound, equipment, networking. Uh, socializing, practicing in Bo's garage. Oh yeah. Oh, we're right there too. You just mentioned too, with with networking and stuff. Remember my old buddy Ben Leg? I talked to him and I said, "Listen, I need a hand." He's like, "Well, what do you need?" I said, "I need a PA system." Ah. Uh. Remember that? We we needed to, and he goes, "Well, how about you come over? You can borrow mine. That's fine." And that's what I used to do. I drive over there, borrow it bring it over and we'd hook it up and we would use it you know to, to rehearse and jam and then use it for the live stuff and then we you know give it back until eventually you got your stuff together and you picked up your own stuff yeah uh, but uh, yes yeah, it's, it's all about the networking that's part of it too it definitely helps and no one else is going to do it for you if you're in a small little set then you have to put on multiple hats we yeah. became rather good at that uh, and Bo uh, likes to wear a chef hat. <laughs> he loves to barbecue. He was such a great host. Oh yeah, that was good, good times. The garage, uh, garage parties. Yep. Uh, Complete with friend. couch and the sound system and oh, it was good. Yeah, for everybody out there, you just picture we walked to his place at the time, and he was in a was it a three story complex and another one beside. You go in between them, and there's there's the backyard and all these garages. And we just open the door, and there's everything all set up. Playing, and there's the lawn with full of chairs, and it was great, good times. Just playing out in front of everybody in the back, and you know, all awesome, good memories. Good yeah, times. we packed that place with several people in the summer times. Uh, Bo was always like, "No, this is not a block party. No, guys, keep it down." <laughs> no, no block party. And there's People in the buildings and the high rises, and they're just like looking at us and seeing what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs>